Good afternoon, uh, myself Dr. Amrita Kumari, uh, Senior Lecturer from the Department of Periodontology. Um, today we will discuss on the topic Smoking and Periodontal Disease. These are my contents, uh, Introduction, uh, Constituents of this uh, Tobacco Smoking, Classification, Effect of Smoking on Periodontal Disease, Effect of Smoking on Response to Periodontal Therapy, Smoking Cessation. Now coming to the introduction, smoking is a major public health concern due to detrimental effect of tobacco on various body system. So likewise, smoking is a significant risk factor for periodontal disease. Evidence demonstrate a moderate to strong association between smoking and periodontitis. So uh, they are, uh, the constituents uh, of the tobacco smoking are uh, per, per, there are two phase, particulate phase, in particulate phase there is nicotine, tar and in gas phase there is carbon monoxide, ammonia, formaldehyde, hydrogen cyanide. Uh, there are different uh, various methods of tobacco smoking like uh, cigarette, uh, hookah, BD uh, and now coming to the classification uh, according to Center for Disease Control and Prevention, current smoker uh, are the smokers who have smoked more than or equal to 100 cigarettes over their lifetime. Former smoker, smokers uh, who have smoked more than or equal to 100 cigarettes over their lifetime but were not currently smoking. Non-smokers, smokers who have not, uh, non, -smokers, non smokers not smoked more than or equal to 100 cigarettes in their lifetime. Now according to the number of cigarettes Smoked per day, heavy smokers smoked more than or equal to 20 cigarettes per day and light smokers smoked more less than or equal to 19 cigarettes per day. Now effect of smoking on prevalence and severity of periodontal disease. So now, uh, ev now evidence from uh, various studies like uh, longitudinal study, uh, randomized control trials, cross-sectional studies uh, and systematic review, they all have concluded uh, that in gingivitis, uh, when we compare smokers and non-smokers, in smokers we have seen that there is less bleeding on probing when we compare to non-smoker uh, and this is due to the vasoconstructive effect of nicotine. Now when coming to the periodontitis, uh, when we compared smokers uh, and non-smokers, in smokers we have seen there is increased prevalence and severity of periodontal destruction uh, as compared to non-smoker uh, and then there is increased pocket there, there is uh, attachment loss, increased attachment loss and bone loss, there is increased rate of periodontal destruction, there is increased prevalence of severe, uh, severe periodontitis there is increased tooth loss, there is increased prevalence with increased number of cigarettes smoked per day and there is decreased prevalence and severity with and it has been seen that there is decreased prevalence and severity with smoking cessation. Now coming to effect of smoking on the etiology and pathogenesis of periodontal disease. It has been seen that in, uh, when it compared with uh, smokers and non-smokers, it has been seen my, in microbiology, there is increased complexity of the microbiome and colonization of periodontal pocket by periodontal pathogens. And even we can see in immune inflammatory response, there is altered neutrophil chemotaxis, phagocytosis and oxidative rust. There is increased tumor necrosis factor alpha and postaglandin E2 in gingival crevicular fluid. There is increased neutrophil collagenase and elastase in gingival crevicular fluid. There is increased production of prostaglandin E2 by monocyte in response to lipopolysaccharides. Then when coming to physiology, it has been seen that there is decreased gingival bl uh, blood vessels with increased inflammation. There is decreased gingival crevicular fluid flow and bleeding on probing with increased inflammation. There is decreased subgingival temperature increased time needed to recover from local anesthesia. Now effect of smoking on response to periodontal therapy. 
So in uh, evidence has concluded that uh, that smokers uh, in non-surgical periodontal therapy, smoker uh, shows less uh, less effective effect of less effective effective in non-surgical therapy. They like they is they in when uh, smoke when when smokers goes for non-surgical periodontal therapy, they in, increase clinical response to root surface debridement. There is decreased reduction in probing them. There is decreased gain in clinical attachment level. There is decreased negative impact of smoking with increased level of plaque control. And when coming to surgical procedures, uh, it has been seen that when we compare to smokers and non-smokers, in smoker it has been seen after surgical therapy also there is decreased probing death reduction and decreased gain in clinical attachment levels after SS flap surgery, there is decreased uh, deterioration of furcation after surgery, there is decreased gain in clinical attachment level, uh, decreased bone fill, increased recession and increased membrane exposure after guided tissue uh, regeneration. This, and also it has been seen there is decreased root coverage after grafting procedure for localized gingival recession, there is decreased probing depth reduction after bone graft procedure, there is increased risk for implant failure and peri-implantitis and in maintenance uh, care it has been seen there is increased probing depth and attachment loss during maintenance therapy there is decreased disease recur it has been seen that uh, there is decreased recurrence in smokers uh, in maintenance phase it has been seen and in, in, in there is increased need for retreatment in smokers uh, there is increased tooth loss in smokers after surgical therapy now coming to smoking cessation, uh, cessation advice for healthcare provider, there is five A's for smoking cessation. The, we, they ask, means uh, in this, what, uh, in this we ask the sm patient, uh, smokers that what do you smoke, how much do you smoke and how long have you smoked. In, uh, then we give advice, we say, uh, uh, ask, uh, we discuss harmful effect and urge patient to quit as soon as possible. Then we assess, we see that patient smokers, jo, the, the patient who is a smoker, uh, smokers, uh, that, that they are willingness to quit or not. Then after that, after assessing, then we assess, we uh, help create best plan for quitting. If they are ready for the quit, uh, uh, quitting the smoking, then we help to create best plan for quitting. And then we arrange, we arrange the follow up if uh, quitting within one week or uh, date. Now coming to nicotine uh, withdrawal, uh, there are two types of nicotine withdrawal agents. There is uh, nicotine containing and non-nicotine containing. So first line pharmacotherapy for smoking cessation, in, uh, these are the drugs in uh, which we provide. Um, like uh, these are the uh, non, uh, these are nicotine containing, uh, 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 this, is, this is nicotine gum. Uh, in, in this precaution and contraindication is that temporomandibular disorder, if the person is having temporomandibular disorder, this exacerbated by chewing gum. Uh, the side effects of this nicotine gum is mouth uh, soreness and dysphagia. Then doses are 1 to 24 cigarette per day uh, and 2 mg gum uh, up to 24 pieces per day. Then 25 plus cigarette per day. Uh, then 4 mg gum up to 24 pieces per day. And durations up to 12 weeks. Then there is another nicotine containing uh, drug. There is nicotine inhaler. Uh, this uh, the side effect of nicotine inhaler is there is local irritation of mouth and throat. Uh, the doses is 6 to 16 cigarette per day and duration up to 6 months. Then there is another nicotine nasal spray. The side effect of this uh, is uh, nasal irritation. Uh, doses are 8 to 40 doses per day and duration 3 to 6 months. Then nicotine patch, the side effect is local uh, skin reaction, it has been seen, and insomnia. And the doses is 22 mg per 24 hours, uh, 14 mg uh, per 24 hours, 7 mg per 24 hours, 15 mg per 16 hours. And duration 4 weeks, then 2 weeks, then 2 weeks, and 8 weeks. And there is another nicotine lozenge, uh, the side effect is uh, hurt, uh, hurt burn, mouth soreness. Uh, doses 2 mg, uh, then, uh, four, then 4 mg lozenges, then no more than 20 lozenges per day. And the durations are weeks uh, 1 to 6, 1 lozenge every 1 to 2 hours, weeks 
seven to seven to nine. Uh, and this is uh, the, these all were nicotine containing and this is non nicotine containing bupropene sustained release and the impact of smoking cessation of on periodontal status and treatment oscope it has been seen that rate of bone loss and attachment loss slows after patient quit smoking thank you thank you very much uh -huh.